Good afternoon. Today I would like to introduce you the next pharmacology lecture, pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. Lecture plan. Pharmacokinetics, absorption, distribution, metabolism, excretion. Pharmacodynamics, effects and mode of action. Basics of drug action and drug interaction. And drug action across the lifespan. Let's start from pharmacokinetics. So what does it mean pharmacokinetics? It is the part of pharmacology that concerned with absorption, distribution, metabolism or biotransformation and excretion of drugs. In simple words, what the organism does to the drugs. On this slide you can see the schematic depiction of pharmacokinetic processes. Absorption, biotransformation, distribution, storage and excretion. So what are the factors which influence the efficiency of a drug? First of all, it is the route of administration, the rate of absorption, the distribution of the drug to the required site, the rate of biotransformation or metabolism, the presence of active metabolites, and the rate of excretion. Let's start from absorption. Absorption is movement of the drug from its site of administration into the circulation. Not only the fraction of the administered dose that gets absorbed, but also the rate of absorption is important. To be effective, a drug must be absorbed, except for topical and IV routes of administration. This means drugs have to cross cell membranes. The ability of the drug to cross the cell membrane is influenced by its solubility in water or fat, its size and shape. Drugs cross cell membrane by filtration, only small water soluble molecules which flow through the hydrophilic pores, passive transport, diffusion from high concentrations to low concentrations, active transport, energy and carriers are required to move non fat soluble substances across the cell membrane as an example against concentration gradient. On this slide you can see examples of different oral preparations and their speed of absorption. From the fastest, which are for example liquids, elixirs and syrups, to the slowest, which are for example enteric coated tablets. As I told before, for the drug to be effective it must be absorbed except topical and IV injection. Because IV injection is delivered straight to bloodstream and it has got rapid action. All other routes need to be absorbed from the side of administration. The speed of action depends on the absorption rate. The absorption rate constant is a value used in pharmacokinetics to describe the rate at which a drug enters into the system. It is expressed in units of time. It is related to the absorption half-life per the following equation. And in here you can see an equation. This ln in ingaps 2, it is natural logarithm of 2, and also in here you can see its definition and its exact number. So what are the factors affecting the absorption rate? Route of administration, blood supply to the site of absorption, formulation of the drug, gut transit time, pH in the gut, and solubility of the product. Distribution. Once a drug enters into systemic circulation by absorption or direct administration, as an IV for example, it must be distributed into interstitial and intracellular fluids. Each organ or tissue can receive different doses of the drug and the drug can remain in the different organs or tissues for a varying amount of time. Drugs in bloodstream are distributed to body in central compartment, major organs and blood vessels, for example, low lipid solubility, hydrophilic, and low volume of distribution, and peripheral compartment, skin and fat stores. These are high lipid solubility, lipophilic, and high volume of distribution drugs. The extent and pattern of distribution of a drug depends on its lipid solubility, ionization and physiological pH, extent of binding to plasma and tissue proteins, presence of tissue-specific transporters, and differences in regional blood flow. As I mentioned before about plasma protein binding, I would like to explain you that only free fraction can move to the target site. For example, 80% bound and 20% free. 
Movement of drug proceeds until an equilibrium is established between unbound drug in the plasma and the tissue fluids. Subsequently, there is a parallel decline in both due to elimination. Drugs vary in the degree to which they are plasma protein bound. Common blood proteins that drugs bind to are human serum albumin, lipoprotein, glycoprotein, and alpha, beta, and gamma globulins. Effects of protein binding. It assists oral absorption of a drug, delays metabolic degradation, delays excretion, and diminishes penetration into the CNS. Its significance, it acts as reservoir and thereby prolongs action of drug. Now we came to the part of volume of distribution. In this example, 1000 mg of drug injected IV produces steady state plasma concentration of 50 mg per liter. Apparent volume of distribution is 20 liters. The drug doesn't actually distribute into 20 liters of body water, with the exclusion of the rest of it. This is only an apparent volume of distribution, which can be defined as the volume that would accommodate all the drug in the body, if the concentration throughout was the same as in plasma. Thus, it describes the amount of drug present in the body as a multiple of that contained in a unit volume of plasma. Considered together with drug clearance, this is a very useful pharmacokinetic concept. Next one is metabolism. The primary site for drug metabolism is liver. Others are kidney, intestine, lungs and plasma. But transformation of drugs may lead to the following. Inactivation. Most drugs and their active metabolites are rendered inactive or less active, for example, ibuprofen, paracetamol, lidocaine, chloramphenicol, and others. Second, active metabolite from an active drug. Many drugs have been found to be partially converted to one or more active metabolites. The effects observed are the sum total of that due to the parent drug and its active metabolite or metabolites. And third, activation of inactive drug. Few drugs are inactive as such and need conversion in the body to one or more active metabolites. Such drug is called a prodrug. The prodrug may offer advantages over the active form in being more stable, having better bioavailability or other desirable pharmacokinetic properties or less side effects and toxicity. Some prodrugs are activated selectively at the site of actions. And also please, Pay attention that patients with a hepatic impairment may require regulation of doses. On this slide you can see the schematic representation of major organ of metabolism, which is liver, and its function of metabolism. By transformation reactions can be classified into non-synthetic phase 1 functionalization reactions, a functional group is generated or exposed. Metabolite may be active or inactive. Synthetic conjugation phase 2 reactions. An endogenous radical is conjugated to the drug. Metabolite is mostly inactive, except for few drugs. And in here is the schematic representation of phase 1 and phase 2. The description of Premier's picture. Most drugs are metabolized by many pathways, simultaneously or sequentially, as illustrated in previous figure. Rates of reaction by different pathways often vary considerably. A variety of metabolites of a drug may be produced. Stereoisomers of a drug may be metabolized differently and at different rates. As an example, S-warfarin rapidly undergoes ring oxidation, while R-warfarin is slowly degraded by side chain reduction. Only a few drugs are metabolized by enzymes of intermediary metabolism. For example, alcohol by dehydrogenase, allopurinol by xanthine oxidase, succinylcholine and procaine by plasma cholinesterase, adrenaline by monoamino oxidase. Majority of drugs are acted on by relatively non-specific enzymes, which are directed to types of molecules rather than to specific drugs. 
The same enzyme can metabolize many different drugs. The drug metabolizing enzymes are divided into two types. Microsomal enzymes, these are located on smooth endoplasmic reticulum, primarily in liver, also in kidney, intestinal mucosa, and lungs. The monooxygenases, cytochrome P450, UGTs, epoxide hydrolases, etc., are microsomal enzymes. They catalyze most of the oxidations, reductions, hydrolysis, and glucuronide conjugation. Microsomal enzymes are inducible by drugs, diet, and other agencies. Second is non-microsomal enzymes. These are present in the cytoplasm and mitochondria of hepatic cells, as well as in the other tissues, including plasma. The esterases, amidases, some flower protein oxidases, and most conjugases are non-microsomal. So what are the factors which affect metabolism? Genetic factors, other drugs, for example, cimetidine, cyproxan, smoking, enzyme induction inhibition, some foods, liver disease, and age. So now we came to the part which is called first pass effect. It is the metabolism of a drug and its passage from the liver into the circulation. A drug given via the oral route may be extensively metabolized by the liver before reaching the systemic circulation. High first pass effect. The same drug given IV bypasses the liver, preventing the first pass effect from taking place, and more drug reaches the circulation. And here you can see metabolism of orally administered drugs in a single passage throughout the gut wall and the liver. Drugs for which presystemic metabolism is significant are the sorbide nitrate, propranolol, etc. First pass elimination is reduced in severe hepatic cirrhosis. So what are the attributes of drugs with high first pass metabolism? Oral dose is considerably higher than sublingual or parenteral dose. There is marked individual variation in the oral dose due to differences in the extent of first pass metabolism. Oral bioavailability is apparently increased in patients with severe liver disease. Oral bioavailability of the drug is increased if another drug competing with it in first pass metabolism is given concurrently, for example, chlorpromazine and propranolol. And also, except intravenous route of administration, there exists other routes that bypass the liver, for example, sublingual, buccal, Rectal, intravenous, intranasal, transdermal, vaginal, intramuscular, subcutaneous, inhalation. From all of this, rectal root undergoes a higher degree of first pass effects than the other routes listed. Elimination. Elimination is equal to metabolism plus excretion. For example, via kidneys in urine, via gut in feces, the skin, sweat, the lungs, breath, saliva, and milk. Patients with renal disease or dysfunction, for example, elderly, heart disease, may require lower doses as the drug will be retained for longer than in normal patients. On this slide, you can see enterohepatic cycling of drugs. The description will be on the next slide. The description. In the liver, many drugs, including steroids, are conjugated by the enzyme UPD glucuronyl transferases, UGTs, to form drug glucuronide. Part of the DG enters systemic circulation and is excreted into urine by the kidney through both glomerular filtration, GF, as well as active tubular secretion involving renal organic anion transporting peptide, OATP. Another part of DG is actively secreted into bile by the hepatic OATP. On reaching the gut lumen via bile, a major part of DG is deconjugated by hydrolytic enzymes, deconjugases, while the remaining is excreted into feces. The released drug is reabsorbed from the gut to again reach the liver through portal circulation and complete the enterohepatic cycle. So once again, take a look at this picture. 
Next one. Renal excretion. The kidney is responsible for excreting all water-soluble substances. The amount of drug or its metabolites ultimately present in urine is the sum total of glomerular filtration, tubular reabsorption, and tubular secretion. On this picture, you can see schematic depiction of glomerular filtration, tubular reabsorption, and tubular secretion of drugs. Kinetics of elimination. The knowledge of kinetics of elimination of a drug provides the basis as well as serves to devise rational dosage regimens and to modify them according to individual needs. There are three fundamental pharmacokinetic parameters – bioavailability, volume of distribution, and clearance. Let's start from clearance. The clearance of a drug is the theoretical volume of plasma from which the drug is completely removed in unit time. Analogy creating in clearance. It can be calculated by this formula, where C is the plasma concentration. And also in here you can see illustration of the concept of drug clearance. The next one is bioavailability, which is also very important. It is a complex of pharmacokinetic processes that maintains active concentration of drug in the area of specific receptors. In simple, part of administered drug that reaches the systemic circulation and affects specific receptors. In here you can see schematic representation of concentration of the drug and the time which passed and also area under the curve. This area under the curve, it is maximum important for us to understand the bioavailability and the effect of the drug. As you can see on the similar picture, up to this moment, up to the maximum possible concentration, which reached by the single dose, in this part we are talking mainly about absorption, and after the moment of maximum possible concentration of single dose, elimination. So what are the factors which are influencing bioavailability? Drug solubility, pharmaceutical formulation, pH and food. So next one is half-life, or in other words, time of half elimination. It refers to the time required for the body to eliminate 50% of the drug. It is very important in planning the frequency of dosing. For example, short half-life drugs needs to be given frequently. Long half-life requires less frequent dosing. Please note that it takes 5 to 6 half-lives to eliminate approximately 90% of a drug from the body. Also, please note that liver and kidney disease patients may have problems of excreting a drug. Difficulty in excreting a drug increases the half-life and increases the risk of toxicity. Implication may require frequent diagnostic tests and measuring renal and hepatic functions. Half-life. As you saw in the previous slide, and here is the formula for calculating of half-life. Half-life is measured in three ways. Plasma half-life, biological effect half-life, biological half-life. Plasma half-life. Time in which the plasma concentration falls by one half. Influenced by various factors, tissue diffusion, protein binding, renal excretion. So second is biological effect half-life. It is the time in which the pharmacological effect of the drug and of any of the active metabolites has declined by one half. For example, for antibiotics, but it varies with each infection. Third, biological half-life. Time in which the total amount of drug in the body, after equilibrium of plasma with other compartments, fat muscle is halved. Measuring using radioisotopes, rates of excretion. And on this picture you can see multiple dose plasma profile. You can see that after some time, around 4-5 half-lives, this is in steady state. Steady state concentration, characteristics, plateau concentration, rate of input of drug to the body is matched by rate of elimination, has to be in therapeutic range to maintain effect, affected by half-life of drug.
Dose regimen. Dose. Appropriate amount of drug required to produce a desired pharmacological action. It can be loading dose, for example, the dose required to achieve a target concentration rapidly, and maintenance dose, used to retain the target level by balancing the elimination. As an example, loading dose of doxycycline is 200 mg, and maintenance dose is 100 mg a day. Also, what are the factors determining dosage? Half-life, age, sex, body weight and surface area, tolerance, specific disease. And also some shortenings which you can use in dosaging. Once a day OD, at morning OM, at night ON, 12 hourly BD, and so on. The next one is pharmacodynamics. Effects and mode of action. So, pharmacodynamics, what does it mean? It is a part of pharmacology that concerned with the biochemical and physiological effects of drugs and their mode of action. Please remember the differences between these two terms, action and effect. Action. How and where the effect is produced is called as action. Effect. The type of response produced by drug. Pharmacodynamics includes the dose-effect relationship, factors modifying drug effects, dosage, drug toxicity. In simple words, pharmacodynamics is what drugs do to the organism. So what are the types of drug action? Stimulation. It is selective enhancement of the level of activity of specialized cells. For example, adrenaline stimulates the heart. Inhibition, depression. It is selective diminution of activity of specialized cells. For example, quinidine depresses heart. Replacement refers to the use of natural metabolites, hormones in deficiency states. For example, iron in anemia. Irritation refers a non-selective, often noxious effect and is particularly applied to less specialized cells. For example, Counter irritants increase blood flow to the site. And cytotoxic action for invading parasites or cancer cells, for example, penicillin. So, the next very important part of pharmacodynamics is mechanism of action. Only a handful of drugs act by virtue of their simple physical or chemical property, for example, bulk laxatives, physical mass, dimeticone, physical form opacity. Paraaminobenzoic acid, absorption of UV rays, activated charcoal, absorptive property, and others. The other ways by which drugs can produce therapeutic effects. Once the drug is at the site of action, it can modify the rate, increase or decrease, at which the cells or tissues function. The question, how? Majority of drugs produce their effects by interacting with a discrete target biomolecule, which usually is a protein. Such mechanism confers selectivity of action to the drug. Functional proteins that are targets of drug action can be grouped into four major categories. Enzymes, ion channels, transporters, and receptors. On this slide, you can see the pictures of four major types of myomacromolecular targets of drug actions. Enzyme, transmembrane ion channel, membrane-bound transporter, and receptor. Let's start from the first part of biomacromolecular target, enzymes. On the right side, you can see effect of enzyme induction, stimulation, and inhibition on kinetics of enzyme reaction. In here, for example, is normal situation. In here are examples of competitive inhibition and non-competitive inhibitions, which you see decreased, and also enzyme induction and enzyme stimulation, which you, as you can see, increased. Some examples of enzymes, cholinesterase, monoamino oxidase, cyclooxygenase, and angiotensine converting enzyme. The next one are ion channels. Proteins which act as ion selective channels participate in transmembrane signaling and regulate intracellular ionic composition. 
This makes them a common target of drug action. Slide 55, picture B. Drugs can affect ion channels, some of which actually are receptors, because they are operated by specific signal molecules, either directly and are called ligand-gated channels, or through G-proteins and are termed G-protein-regulated channels. Drugs can also act on voltage-operated and stretch-sensitive channels by directly binding to the channel and affecting ion movement through it. In addition, certain drugs modulate opening and closing of channels. And on this slide you can see some examples of ion channels, voltage-dependent potassium channels, calcium channels and sodium channels. Next one are transporters. Several substrates are translocated across membranes by binding to specific transporters or carriers which either facilitate diffusion in the direction of the concentration gradient or pump the metabolite against the concentration gradient using metabolic energy. Many drugs produce their action by directly interacting with the solute carrier class of transporter proteins to inhibit the ongoing physiological transport of the metabolite ion. Again, slide 55, picture C. The next one are receptors. The largest number of drugs do not bind directly to the effector-like enzymes, channels, transporters, structural proteins, template biomolecules, etc., but act through specific regulatory macromolecules which control the above-listed effectors. These regulatory macromolecules, or the sites on them which bind and interact with the drug, are called receptors. So, to generalize, receptors are the places where drugs bind to tissues, macromolecules, enzymes, channels, transport systems, genes. What are the types of drug-receptor interaction? First of all, agonists, for example, adrenaline, isoproteranol, morphine, etc. Chemicals fit at receptor site well. Partial agonist. Attached to the receptor, but only produce a small effect. Inverse agonist. An agent which activates a receptor to produce an effect in the opposite direction to that of the agonist. Antagonist. For example, atropine, propranolol, diphenhydramine, etc. Chemical blocks another chemical from getting to a receptor. Agonist antagonist. For example, labetalol, pentazocin. They are agonists and antagonists at the same time. For example, once again, labetalol, alpha-1, beta-1 adrenal blocker, but activates beta-2 adrenal receptors. Pentazocin, agonist, delta and kappa opiate receptors, and mu receptors antagonists. And one more ligand. Any molecule which attaches selectively to particular receptor or sites. The term only indicates affinity or ability to bind without regard to functional change. Agonists and competitive antagonists are both ligands of the same receptor. On this slide you can see some specific cell sites. For example, opiate receptors, steroid receptor, serotonin receptor and GABA receptors. Classification of receptors. Some examples of subtypes of receptors. For example, cholinergic receptors, we know M1, M2, M3, M4, M5. Adrenergic receptors, alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, beta-2, beta-3. Dopamine receptors, D1, D2, D3, D4, D5. Serotonin receptors, GABA receptors, benzodiazepine receptors, histamine receptors, cannabioid receptors, opioid receptors, and others. So now we came to the point of transducer mechanisms. Considerable progress has been made in the understanding of transducer mechanisms, which in most instances have been found to be highly complex multi-step processes that provide for amplification and integration of concurrently received extra and intracellular signals at each step. Because only a handful of transducer pathways are shared by a large number of receptors, the cell is able to generate an integrated response 
reflecting the sum total of diverse signal input. The transducer mechanisms can be grouped into five major categories. G-protein coupled receptors, ion channel receptors, transmembrane enzyme-linked receptor, transmembrane jack start binding receptor, receptors regulating gene expression, for example, transcription factors, nuclear receptors. Regulation of receptors. Receptors exist in a dynamic state. Their density and efficiency to elicit the response is subject to regulation by the level of ongoing activity, feedback from their own signal output, and other physiopathological influences. In tonically active systems, prolonged deprivation of the agonist by denervation or continued use of an antagonist or a drug which reduces input results in supersensitivity of the receptor as well as the effector system to agonist. This has clinical relevance in clonidine, for example. Conversely, continued intense receptor stimulation causes desensitization or refractoriness. The receptor becomes less efficient in transducing response to the agonist. And on the right side you can see illustration of the phenomenon of desensitization, contractile responses of frog erectus abdominis muscle to acetylcholine. Functions of receptors. These can be summarized as to propagate regulatory signals from outside to inside the effector cell when the molecular species carrying the signal cannot itself penetrate the cell membrane. To amplify the signal, to integrate various extracellular and intracellular regulatory signals, to adapt to short-term and long-term changes in the regulatory milieu and maintain homeostasis. Also, one more part which I would like to discuss with you in this lecture is drug potency and efficiency. Potency. It is used to indicate the amount of drug required to produce a specific response. Efficiency is the maximum effect produced by a drug. This is important to know when deciding between two drugs that have similar action. For example, two antibiotics may effectively kill the same organism, but one may take more doses than another, making the other more effective. And on this slide you can see the schematic representation of drug potency and efficiency. As you can see, drug A is more potent than drug B, but drug A is less effective than drug B. One more very important part of our lecture is drug selectivity. Selectivity is the degree to which a drug acts on a given site relative to other sites. Relatively non-selective drugs affect many different tissues or organs. For example, atropine, a drug given to relax muscles in the digestive tract, may also relax muscles in the eyes and in the respiratory tract. Relatively selective drugs, for example, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, such as aspirin and ibuprofen, target any area where inflammation is present. And highly selective drugs affect mainly a single organ or system. For example, digoxin, a drug given to manage heart failure, affects mainly the heart, increasing its pumping efficiency. Next one is therapeutic index or ratio. It is a measure of the relative safety of a drug for a particular treatment. Large value, a wide margin of safety, for example, penicillin. Small value, a narrow margin of safety, for example, warfarin. What are the characteristics of therapeutic index? Devised by Ehrlich, it is the correlation between maximum tolerated dose and minimum curative dose, gives indication of safety, especially applicable to antibiotics, defines safety in relation to efficiency. And also in here explanation of ED50 and LD50, which you saw in the previous slide. Median effective dose ED50 is a dose of the drug that gives a response equals to 50% of the maximal response. Median lethal dose LD50 is the dose of a drug required to produce toxicity in 50% of patients.
The next part of our lecture is basics of drug action and drug interaction. Basics of drug action. Onset of action. The period between the moment of drug introduction to the organism and the beginning of its action. Duration of drug action. The period of specific effects of the drug are maintained. Wideness of therapeutic action. Therapeutic window. The distance between minimum therapeutic and minimum toxic doses of drug. Desired action. The expected response of a medication. Side effects. Known and frequently experienced expected reaction to drug. Adverse reaction. Unexpected, unpredictable reactions that are not related to usual effects of a normal dose of the drug. Drug interaction. When two or more drugs are given simultaneously or directly after each other, they may be either indifferent to each other or exhibit synergism or antagonism. It is sometimes helpful but often produce adverse effect. You may search in the web drug interaction checker for your information and for the help in the future. Synergism and antagonism of drugs. Synergism. When the action of one drug is facilitated or increased by the other, they are said to be synergistic. In a synergistic pair, both the drugs can have the action in the same direction, or given alone one may be inactive, but still enhance the action of the other when given together. It can be additive or supra-additive synergism. Antagonism. When one drug decreases or abolishes the action of other, they are said to be antagonistic. It can be physical, chemical, physiological or functional, and receptor antagonism. First of all, additive synergism. The effect of the two drugs is in the same direction and simply adds up. Effect of drugs A plus B equals to effect of drug A plus effect of drug B. And here also you can see some additive drug combinations, for example, aspirin plus paracetamol as analgesic antipyretic, nitrous oxide plus halotane as general anesthetic, and others. Next one is supra-additive synergism, potentiation synergism. The effect of combination is greater than the individual effects of the components. Effect of drug A plus B is more than effect of drug A plus effect of drug B. And here we can see some examples of supra-additive drug combinations. For example, acetylcholine plus physostigmine, inhibition of breakdown. Levodopa plus carbidopa, inhibition of peripheral metabolism. Adrenaline plus cocaine, inhibition of neuronal uptake. Antagonism. When one drug decreases or abolishes the action of another, they are said to be antagonistic. Effect of drugs A plus B is less than effect of drug A plus effect of drug B. As an example, you can see in here heparin and protamine sulfate. Protamine sulfate counteracts heparin toxicity. And also receptor antagonism. Receptor antagonism can be competitive or non-competitive. And here you can see a description of competitive antagonism. The antagonist is chemically similar to the agonist, competes with it and binds to the same site to the exclusion of the agonist molecules. Non-competitive antagonism. The antagonist is chemically unrelated to the agonist, binds to a different allosteric site, altering the receptor in such way that it is unable to combine with the agonist or is unable to transduce the response so that the downstream chain of events are uncoupled. And non-equilibrium antagonism. Certain antagonists bind to the receptor with strong covalent bonds or dissociate from it slowly due to very high affinity so that agonist molecules are unable to reduce receptor occupancy of the antagonist molecules. Law of mass action cannot apply, and irreversible or non-equilibrium antagonism is produced. 
And also in here you can see some examples of competitive and non-competitive receptor antagonism. And one more part is adverse drug effects. Adverse effect is any undesirable or unintended consequence of drug administration. It is a broad term, includes all kinds of noxious effect, trivial, serious, or even fatal. Adverse effects have been classified in many ways. One may divide them into predictable type A reactions, unpredictable type B reactions. Severity of adverse drug reactions has been graded as minor, moderate, severe, and lethal. Adverse drug effects may be categorized into side effects, secondary effects, toxic effects, intolerance, idiosyncrasy, drug allergy, photosensitivity, drug dependence, drug withdrawal reactions, teratogenicity, mutagenicity and carcinogenicity, drug-induced diseases. 200,000 people in USA die from side effects of drugs annually. 76.6 billions of dollars are spared in USA annually to treat complications attached to drugs usage. Side effects and complications of drugs take fifth place among causes of mortality on the earth after cardiovascular diseases, malignant tumors, lung diseases, traumas. Among stationary patients, frequency of side effects after introduction of drugs makes from 2 to 40%. Medical mistakes in clinics. From the side of doctors, first of all, overdosing, administration of drugs to patients with allergy, mixing up names of the drugs. From the side of medical nurses, introduction of other drug by mistake, violation of drug introduction regime, mistake in medical form, mixing up names of the drugs. And last part of our lecture is drug action across the lifespan. Drug administration during pregnancy, drug administration during childhood, and drug administration during adulthood. First of all, drug therapy during pregnancy and breastfeeding. Must balance risk versus benefits of drugs during pregnancy. Affect fetus more than mother. Teratogenic effects. Mother's health affect fetus. For example, chronic asthma is more dangerous to the fetus than the drugs used for treatment. Mothers who do not take medication for asthma, the incidence of stillbirth is doubled. Pregnancy alters drug disposition and excretion processes. By third trimester, renal blood flow is doubled with an increase in glomerular filtration and elimination of drugs increases. Therefore, we will need an increased dosage of drug to compensate. Tone and motility of intestines, peristalsis, decrease in pregnancy. More time for drugs to be absorbed. Most drugs that enter the maternal circulation can cross the placenta to some extent. Additionally, Lipid soluble cross more easily. Ionized highly polar or protein bounds cross with difficulty. Drug therapy during breastfeeding. Drugs get through breast milk and can affect infant. Lipid soluble drugs are in higher concentration. Things that can minimize risk. Dose after breastfeeding. Take drugs with short half-life. Take drugs that are not found in breast milk. Avoid drugs known to be hazardous. Teratogenesis, the process by which congenital malformations are produced in an embryo or fetus. For example, cleft palate, hydrocephalus, spina bifida, behavioral and biochemical anomalies. There are three stages of embryonic development. Pre-implantation embryogenic period and fetal period. During pre-implantation and embryonic stages, the teratogen acts in an all or none response. If the dose is high enough, the fetus will die. If dose is sublethal, fetus will recover. 
gross malformations produced by exposure to teratogens during the embryonic period, first trimester. Exposure during the second and third trimesters usually result in organ dysfunction rather than gross malformation. Few drugs considered to be teratogenic, but it is hard to prove because incidence of congenital anomalies is low, animal tests may not be applicable, prolonged exposure may be necessary, teratogenic effects may be delayed, behavioral effects are hard to document, controlled experiments cannot be done in humans. To prove a drug is teratogen, drug must cause characteristic set of malformations. It must act only during a specific window of vulnerability, weeks 4 through 7 of gestation. Incidence of malformations should increase with increasing dosage and duration of exposure. Risk of malformation with most teratogens is only around 10%. Next one is drug therapy in pediatric patients. Patients who are young or old respond differently to drugs than do middle-aged people. Pediatrics – all patients under age 16. Premature infants – less than 36 weeks gestation. Full-term infants – from 36 till 40 week gestational age. Neonates – first 4 weeks postnatal. Infants – 5 to 32 weeks postnatal. Children 1 to 12 years, adolescents 12 to 16 years. Very young patients at risk for prolonged and intense responses. Response of infants due to differences in drug absorption. Absorption of drugs intramuscular is greater in infants than neonates and adults. Renal drug excretion reduced in infants. Hepatic drug metabolism low in newborns. Protein binding of drugs, albumin lower in infants, exclusion of drugs from CNS by blood-brain barrier, not solely developed in infancy, making infant much more susceptible to drugs. By one year, pharmacokinetic response is similar to adult. Drug therapy in geriatric patients. Elderly more sensitive to drugs and exhibit more variability in response. Altered pharmacokinetics, organ degeneration, multiple and severe illnesses, multiple drug therapy and usage, poor compliance. Individualization of treatment is essential. Each patient must be monitored for desired responses and adverse responses, and the regime must be adjusted accordingly. Geriatric patients will vary quite a lot from one patient to another. Physically fit patients respond differently than out of shape. Absorption. Percentage of absorption doesn't usually change with age, but rate may be slowed. Drug response may be delayed. Gastric acidity may be increased in aged, affecting absorption of certain drugs. Distribution. In aged there is. Increased body fat reduces plasma levels of lipid-soluble drugs. Decreased total body water increases concentration of water-soluble drugs and intensity of response. Reduced concentration of serum albumin. Malnourishment decreases albumin and results in increased drug levels. Metabolism. Hepatic functions decrease in elderly and drug levels increase. Amount of dysfunction variable. Excretion. Decline of renal function in elderly variable, therefore increases drug levels in plasma. Note, pharmacodynamic changes, alterations in receptor levels may change on a number of cells. Decreased affinity of receptors, determine renal function by creating clearance rates. And the last part of our lecture, I would like you to memorize some very important terms. Terminology, therapeutic effect, the response or responses after a treatment of any kind, the results of which are judged to be useful or favorable. This is true whether the result was expected, unexpected, or even an unintended consequence. Side effect. Secondary effect of the drug is one that unintended. Side effects are usually predictable and may be either harmless. Drug toxicity. 
harmful effect of the drug on an organism or tissue. Drug allergy is immunological reaction to a drug. Drug interaction occur when administration of one drug before or after alter effect of one or both drugs. Drug misuse is the improper use of common medications in a way that lead to acute and chronic toxicity, for example, laxative, antacids, and vitamins. Drug abuse is an inappropriate intake of substance, either continually or periodically. Drug dependence is a person's reliance on or need to take drug or substance. There are two types of dependencies. Physiological dependence is due to biochemical changes in the body tissue. This tissue comes to require substance for normal function. Psychological dependence is emotional reliance on a drug to maintain a sense of well-being accompanied with feeling of need. Drug habituation denotes a mild form of psychological dependence. Illicit drug, also called street drug, are those which sold illegally. Dose, appropriate amount of drug required to produce a desired pharmacological action. Therapeutic index is a measure of the relative safety of a drug for a particular treatment. Tolerance, a decrease in response to repetitive drug doses. Thank you for the attention.